Good morning. Sorry, I'm late. How is everyone today? Are we doing well? I hope so. I'm okay. Veronica says morning. How are you today? Sarah says morning. I'm all right, you know. We're going to try something a little bit different today. This might be one that you guys hate, but it might be one that you like to. We'll see. I feel like I say it for every single stitch that we do. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to do a fake thread painting with variegated thread. So before I get started, I'll show you a little bit about the variegated thread. It's basically just dark thread. And then as you go and unwind it, it gets lighter and lighter and lighter. And then it gets darker and darker and darker. So you can see that as I'm going, it gets darker. And they have these in lots of different colors and lots of different color um, variations. So sometimes it's just light to dark. Like this one is a light dark pink to a really, really light pink. Sometimes it's like a blue to a green. Sometimes it's a green to a yellow. I think I've got a green to a yellow. So I've got a couple different colors here. You can see most of the ones that I've got are just a dark color to a light color. Um, I thought I had a green that was like a, yeah, this one. This one almost goes to like a yellowish green at the end and a dark green at this end. So what I've done is I've unwrapped the thread, okay? And I found the middle of the darkest part. So to do that, because I'm gonna put the darkest part in the center and then the lightest part at the tips. So to do that, all I've done is just unwrapped a bunch. Now, if you don't have this kind of thread, you can fake it by using similar colors and just, just changing colors. So yeah, all I'm doing is just matching the thread and making it so that the, the two strands are the same. Yeah. So I, should, I could probably even move this up a little bit to get it like really, really good. So now that these are the same, this will be two, two strands that I can work with or two pieces of thread that I can work with. Um, and then from there, I hope you guys are following this. It's a little bit crazy, but I thought it would be cool. So from there, I've just cut the end so I can have two, two strands of the same color, the same color variation. Okay, and then from there, I'm just taking one of those and taking two strands out. Okay, are you with me still? I hope so. Um, again, if you don't have the variegated thread, then don't worry, you don't really need it. You can always just do two or three colors that are very similar, um, almost like I did with the purples over here. If you have three colors that are really similar, then you could do the same thing we're gonna do this little plant here. And all I'm gonna do is use the darker one in the middle on all of them, then the medium one in the middle, and then the very lightest one at the tips. But I thought if we had a variegated thread, then the color change already happens for you. So I've just got two strands here. So you don't have to change the colors or anything like that. Let me just turn that down. So you don't have to change the colors or anything. It's already just going to happen for you. So hopefully this will work. Okay. Let me zoom it in and we'll see how the light is. It was really nice earlier and I sent a message to David and said, oh, babe, it's really nice today actually. And now it's all gray clouds and it looks like it's going to pour down rain. So apologies for anyone in England. I think I've jinxed us. 
Um, so what we're going to do is for each of these here, um, I'm going to start in the middle like this and make these kind of stitches. So all going out and into the middle of each one. And we're going to follow the shape. So if you have a leaf that goes round like this, you're going to make your stitches go around to follow the shape of that. So let's see. I hope that the color change will happen. Um, this is going to be like a long and short split, split stitch. Very, very similar to what we did on these spongy bobs over here. We're just going to use less strands. So again, you're working this sideways instead of straight up and down because we want all of the dark parts of the thread to be in the center and we want the light parts to be at the tips, which means that each leaf we're going to do individually. So there's like our first layer. Now the next one, we're going to go into each of these stitches. Now you don't have to go into one stitch at a time. When I do this like fake thread painting slash long and short split stitch. People call it a lot of different things. I tend to just fill the space. So I don't necessarily go, now I have to split each one of these stitches. So I've done four stitches here, which means I have to do four splits. Like, no, I don't do that at all. Um, I just stitch to fill the whole area. I told you it got really dark. So sometimes you will split those stitches and other times you won't. I'm just making sure that all of my stitches are blending together. And this is actually a really like freeing way to do um, a thread painting because you don't really have any rules. All I'm doing is just making sure that I'm splitting these stitches. I think there's a bit too much dark on this um, on this thread. I said before I wouldn't be alive if I didn't get a knot like right off the bat huh so yeah we're just gonna keep going like that until the area is filled and then we'll do that for each of the stitches or each of the leaves let's put my thread back on the needle because of course I've pulled it out. <laughs> okay. So this is what I meant by I said, I think that there's going to be too much dark um, thread on mine. So I might have to go back after the thread is used. We'll see. Hello. Now with this, your thread links will vary. Some will be long, some will be short. And I'm gonna go straight over this one here because I definitely stitched over it. And the only thing that you want to keep in mind is to just fill the space. So you want it to be completely filled where you cannot see any of the fabric underneath. And it looks, it looks like a split stitch. But 
But in reality, some of them are split and some of them probably won't be. So there's a little bit of color change just at the tip now. Someone said the leaves that have two colors close to your work. Was that done in long and short also? Um, are you talking about this? This was just a satin stitch. Yep, that was just a satin stitch. So you can go back to, I think it was Monday, so day six. So this has just got a little pink tip to it. And if you want to, you can go back and do those a little bit, blend them a little bit more. So as you're working with your variegated thread, you kind of learn uh, a little bit about it. So for this particular brand, it seems like there's a lot more dark than there is light, which means that um, I can go through and do a little bit of dark in every leaf and then go back with the lighter color. Let me just put a nice tip on this. It's raining. Yeah, and because I have the light color still on my thread, I can just jump over here and do the exact same thing, except work at the tip. Now, if you don't have variegated thread, like I said, and you wanna use uh, two similar colors, of course you can do that. Just want to make sure um, that you're blending them nicely together, which is technically like a whole different day. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you can absolutely do it. So now it's getting a bit too light. So I'll go back to a new strand with some darker colors. Good morning. Okay, let me flip it over. Actually, I still have a little bit left here, so I could just do, jump over here and do some light over here. I don't really want to waste it, you know? I have quite a bit left. So this here is when thinking about like color placement on your thread and color placement where you want to put the color in your pattern um, is quite important because you can really choose ahead of time almost where you want the colors to be and where, where you can like put them down um, even if you're not using variegated thread. So this is where... If I had three colors, say, I would do all of one color first, wherever I wanted that color, and then I would go and do the second color, and then I would do the third color all at one time. So I'm not switching for each 
like each leaf, each, every single time, three different colors. That would be so silly. I know a lot of times I do it like that on here so I can show you one full leaf or one full plant um, so that if you wanted to like dip out of the tutorial after you know how to do it, um, that you, then you can. Okay, so let's get two more strands. And this is basically it. We're just filling in the shape and putting the colors where we want to put the colors. So it's almost like in my head is like a color by number. You know, I know that I want the middles to be darker and I want the ends to be light. So I'm just manipulating the thread in that kind of way, putting it down where, where it needs to be. in business so again I've got the dark thread two strands so I'm going to go back here and do some more work with the dark color and then obviously you can do uh, an outline for each of these if you wanted to um, we might do that tomorrow on the advanced day there really isn't much to do for the advanced day though because we've pretty much added all the things you know but if you really wanted to you could do an outline maybe we just won't do a video tomorrow I'll go back with the medium color and do that. So moving on here. And it'll literally be just when I get to that color in my thread. So this can be a bit of a ball ache, really, you know, if you're, if you can't be bothered, then that's okay. Of course, you could just do um, a regular satin stitch for these. They have a nice smooth look to them if you did, instead of having like the colored tips you could do one color for all of it and then just go back with another color and do some lines in the tips it's up to you it's your hoop you do what you want Alice, it's okay. Don't worry. She said, I'm late. Sorry. Don't worry. Don't worry. So we're doing variegated thread, two strands, and we're just putting down the colors where we want them.
So I realized there is the medium color back on my thread. So I'm just going back in here and putting a couple little, whoop, there's a knot there. Just a couple little stitches where I want um, the colors to change. So back over here, just to blend these back. <laughs> We're doing the sideshow bobs, hair jobby. Yep, <laughs> literally that. All right, let me do one more here, and then I'm gonna go to the next one. So they do actually do um go quickly if you you know get once you get going the only thing with variegated thread is that you just have to look at where your thread is like what color it, your thread is, you know? So I know I've got that medium color on there now, so I'm just filling in any of the places where it's medium before it goes to light again. I need to fix this wacky one right there. And again, these will take a little bit of time, so don't try and get them all finished in one sitting. Make sure that you're getting up, stretching, etc., etc. Done it again. Goodness. I even used a smaller needle for this because I knew that the two strands would be smaller, and I thought, let's be sensible, Tori. Tanya. All right, and again, I've still got light on my needle, so I'm just gonna go over here and continue. Let's move this over so that y'all can see it. the most um, like exciting thing to watch guys I realize this because literally just like coloring in the space with thread <laughs> which isn't <laughs> it's not all that innovative <laughs> you know once you see it and know how to do it it's like all right just crack on um but it is quite effective when you see it and it's um it's all like nicely shaded it and everything I wish I had this really light pink at the tip of that one
Also, guys, I've sent out 33 packages yesterday. So if you're waiting for a order, it is coming and all the rest of them should be sent out today. Um, so yeah, that's exciting because after I get them all sent out, it means I can make a new kit or a new pattern or something, you know, I can get cracking on something else. So from my thread supplier, they've actually sent, um, a couple random extra boxes of thread. So I have about 23 colors that don't belong in any pattern. Um, like some of them are colors that I have used in a different pattern, if you know what I mean. But I've like separated all the patterns and everything and they don't actually belong to a kit. Like they're just extra ones. Um, I'll show you the colors if you want. Ooh, sorry, sorry, sorry. So it's all of these ones. So you'll recognize some of them from a kit and some of them are different. So I get to make a new kit with those ones or two or three new kits, depending on how many colors I use. But that's exciting. I love making kits. Thinking like something with plants, like maybe some pots and some flowers and stuff, like flowers and pots and plants and pots. And I think it'd be really cool. Or maybe like the summer stitch along from last year where it's like the greenhouse and it's like surrounded, you know, that would be fun. I'm just putting in some lines here because I didn't seem to draw them. Was Jesse looking at the pigeon? So um, our back door neighbors, if that makes any sense, like the people who live behind us, they put up a swing set for their kids. And the top of it, like the top triangle of it, you know, where it, it goes together, it just sticks up over the fence. And so all the, the pigeons come and sit on the top of it. And because it's like right over the fence, Jessie can just see the pigeons. So every once in a while, she's like, ooh, ooh, what are you guys doing over there? It's so funny because she'll just be like laying down and all of a sudden she'll be like, what? What's that pigeon doing? Like just sitting, <laughs> literally not doing anything. <laughs> Relax. So yeah, like I said, it's, it's a bit, not boring, but like it's a little bit repetitive, this one, you know, because all you're really doing is just laying the color in um, where you want it to go. But I think it's effective. Hi, Claire. I 
Thanks, Veronica. She says, love the look. Ooh, Claire says, I just been to get my hair did and I feel amazing. I bet. Um, did I tell you guys about what I did to my hair? I don't think I did. So I have like a lot of hair, right? <laughs> this is really embarrassing. <laughs> I have a lot of hair. And so I was like, I'm just going to thin my hair out with the thinning shears. Yeah. So I went and bought some thinning shears, um, from Amazon and they got delivered and I looked up how to do it and all this stuff. And I did it one time in like the very beginning of lockdown, like March, like right when it happened, I was like, Oh, I just really need to get this done. So I bought these thinning shears and I did it and it, it all went fine. And I had thinned out hair and it was absolutely nothing was wrong with it. Well, come about two weeks ago or three weeks ago, I was like, Oh my God, my hair is getting really long. I should probably cut it. And like the way that my hair is, it's curly. So you can't, like if I mess up, you won't really be able to tell that much. So I thought, well, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I got the scissors out and I said, you know what? I'm going to thin my hair as well. So I got the scissors out and I very meticulously took each layer. Okay. And just trimmed off about that much from each layer and everything was fine. And I was like, wow, this is, this is great. I did a, I did a great job. So I said, well, now that I've trimmed it, I should probably thin it again. Okay. Just, just a little bit because getting a bit long and, and quite thick as well. And I have a lot of hair, a lot of hair. So I grabbed the thinning shears and I take all my hair up and I get the very underneath layer very, very, very underneath layer. I grab the thinning shears, I pull my hair out, and I chop it. And I just hear, and I was like, oh my God. And come to find out, I did not grab the thinning shears. I grabbed the regular scissors and cut a chunk of my hair off. Um... Not like this much hair, like 11 inches of hair off. <laughs> um, so yeah, underneath all of my hair, I can't really wear it up anymore because there's just this one bit of hair that's about this long from my head to the end of it. When Claire, you know how long my hair is. It's it's quite long. Um, yeah, so there's just this one chunk that's quite shorter than all of the rest of it. Um, I think I think I deleted the videos of when I did it because I sent it to my friend Maria and was just like cracking up. And it's one of those things where like. I was laughing about it, obviously. Like, I didn't cry or anything. Like, don't get me wrong. It wasn't that bad. Um, so I, like, was like, okay, yeah, whatever. So I, like, did the rest of my hair with the thinning shears and everything. The real thinning shears. Finished it. And then was like, oh, I'm quite hot. You know, I'm just going to whack my hair up. So I put my hair up in a ponytail. And this, <laughs> this one chunk of hair just, like, flops down, like... <laughs> not long enough <laughs> oh my god I was like what am I doing what did I do why didn't I just wait because you know what I the person who cuts my hair she normally comes to my house to cut my hair um and so I was like why didn't I just wait why why did I have to do it I was like, I could have just waited like two or three more weeks and then she probably could have came over and she probably could have done it. Like, that would have been the smart thing to do, but no. I just had to go and do it myself. Veronica says, my sister shaves under the back as hers is so thick. So when she puts it up, you see the shaved bit. See, I don't mind that look. I think it looks like quite nice like that 
but my hair is so long now that I feel like it wouldn't suit me, you know? Maybe I could do it and like donate it or something. But yeah, that's my funny story. I'll see if I have the videos though. I think I might've deleted them, but they might be like in my deleted, my deleted folder, you know? Because iPhones, they tend to like save your deleted, your deleted ones for like 30 days or 40 days or something. If I, if I have them, I'll post them because I could not, I can't stop laughing at them. And finally, I was like, I have to delete these. These are really bad. And I'll show you my little, my lovely bit. That's what we call it. That just won't stay up. So I've got a chunk behind my ear that's like this long. And then in front of my ear, like where my side, my sideburns are, um, I've got the, this like six inch tendril. So I decided that the most obvious thing to do would be to cut the other side by my ear as well so that it looks like I meant to do that. Um, so yeah, I've got two, two little pieces on each side of my face that don't quite make it into my ponytail anymore. So Claire, I hope that your haircut went better than mine. Because mine didn't go so well. But I suppose you had yours done, so. There's that. Okay, well, that's the end of my story. And that's the end of this thread. So, uh, carry on. Um, I don't think there's really anything more that we can add for tomorrow's like advanced video per se. Um, but I can go, I'll go live in the morning and stitch up some more of these guys because I didn't finish them. Um, so yeah, I, okay, so I'll go tomorrow, tomorrow at 10 a.m. Just like always. Um, it probably won't be a advanced thing, like I said, um, unless I think of something from now to then, which I very well might. So yeah, I hope you have a lovely weekend. If I don't talk with you tomorrow, like if you don't come to the live, um, I hope you have a lovely weekend. I can't wait to finish this. It's going to look so good with the dark in the middle. I might go back with an even darker one and just separate like one strand and just do a little outline just to separate those on there that might look good maybe i'll do that tomorrow too so ooh, ella says i'm going to see my parents this weekend so i'm taking all my embroidery supplies with me i'll have the best time and claire says it did go well thank you but would have been a disaster if i tried to do it myself yeah um I still, I feel like that was the beginning of the, all of the disasters, you know, like ever since I did that, maybe that was my lucky bit of hair or something. And then, and then I just cut all my luck off or something like that. Because let me tell you, ever since I did that, it's been a disaster over here. <laughs> uh, all right. So this is what we have so far. Um, I will speak with you tomorrow and do a bit more stitching at 10 a.m. Don't forget to go to the Barmy Fox S-A-L. Leave some likes and comments on some, some of our other friends' works, their hoops. Tell them they're doing a great job. Give them some encouragement. Like and comment. Um, and if you're going to tag me in your stories, don't forget to do at the Barmy Fox and make sure it has that underline. If it hasn't got the underline, then it doesn't tag me and then I don't see it. Um, and I want to repost everyone's hoops. So there's that. There's that. I hope you have a lovely weekend and I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Bye.